This is lesson four from our series, How to Play Blues Guitar. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you the classic blues pattern, or what's called the boogie pattern. Be sure to download the free corresponding How to Play Blues Guitar e-guide. It includes all the charts and diagrams for this lesson, as well as all the charts and diagrams for the whole series. So in the last lesson, you learned how to play the straight rhythm and the shuffle rhythm, and I explained that the shuffle rhythm is more the classic sound of the blues. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to take those power chords we've been using and how to spice them up to make them sound even bluesier. And it's what's called the boogie pattern. And this combined with the shuffle rhythm is really the classic sound of the blues and you'll recognize it right away. So first I'm just gonna demonstrate what I'm talking about. So I'm sure you could hear that really sounds like classic blues. And it's worlds apart from where we started when we were just playing quarter notes. When we just played quarter notes, that wasn't really bluesy at all, but now this is really sounding bluesy. And so I'm just gonna jump to a close up of the guitar and show you exactly what I'm doing and show you how to play it. So how you get that classic blues pattern, also called the boogie pattern, is you add in a note with certain strums. And that note you're adding in is what's called the sixth. And it's called that because it's an interval of the major scale. Don't worry about that if you don't understand it. You can watch our music theory for guitar series if you want to understand that. But that's the note you're adding in. So if we start with the first chord of an A blues, just using an A power chord, that A5, when you're fretting that chord, you should know by now, you're fretting the fourth string, second fret, and you have the fifth string just ringing open. And you're playing those two notes together. Well, what we were doing before was just this. That's the shuffle rhythm with just that power chord. But if I wanna add in the sixth, it's gonna sound like this. And for the A power chord, the A5, the sixth is right here. So that's the fourth string, fourth fret. So the two notes you'll be fretting, you'll be fretting the fourth string, second fret, which is part of that A5 power chord, and then you add in the fourth string, fourth fret at certain points. So. And the places you add in that note, the sixth, is on the two and and the four and. So if I was counting this, one and two and three and four and one. So one and two and three and four and. So it's on the two and and four and. One and two and three and four and. And again, if counting trips you up and all that, don't worry about it you'll be able to hear it and feel it. And again, when we're doing that shuffle feel, just like I was releasing this note every time after I'd strum, I do it every time after I strum on this note, so. So when I go to this note, the sixth, I release it right after I strum it. And that just helps with the shuffle feel. And then when we move to the D5, so the four chord in an A blues, it's the exact same move. So when you're playing a D5, you have the open D string, which is the open fourth string, and then you're fretting the third string, second fret. You should know that by now. And then that sixth interval with the D5 is just a whole step away. It was a whole step away with the A5. It's a whole step away with the D5. And that's on the third string, fourth fret. So. And 
it's the exact same thing. And then when you go to the five chord, the E5, exact same thing. E5, you have the open E, the low E, which is the sixth string. You're fretting the fifth string, second fret. Your sixth interval is one whole step above that fretted note again, and that's the fifth string, fourth fret. So every time it's the exact same movement. So the A5, D5, E5. Now I've got my hand turned on kind of an angle so my fingers are kind of pointing towards me. If it's really hard to make that reach for you if your hands are smaller or you just haven't built up the ability to stretch yet, you can turn your fingers more vertical. So right when I'm doing it, my thumb is up so I can control like the E string ringing out and different things. And that turns my fingers pointing towards me. But if I lower my thumb and move my fingers so they're more vertical pointing towards the ceiling, it would look more like this. Here's the A5. So you may have to do it that way if you're having trouble reaching with your hand at this angle. Again, just lower your thumb, move your fingers so they're more vertical with your frets, your fret wires, and you may be able to make that reach easier. But I like to do it with my thumb up because then when I'm playing like the A5, I don't have to worry about hitting that sixth string as much because I'm meeting it out with my thumb or even with the D5. And then I can just remove it from the sixth string when I play the E5 and then put it back when I go to the A5 or the D5. And that just allows me, if I accidentally hit that string, it's not gonna ring out. But if you really struggle making that reach with your fingers on that angle, just move your fingers more vertical with the frets and it should be easier for you. But if this is really new to you, it just may be something that takes a lot of work to get that reach down and get the feel down. So now I'm just gonna play a whole 12 bar blues in the key of A, just really slowly without a backing track or anything, just so you can see how the pattern works as you're going through all the chords and going through a 12 bar blues. So here we go. <laughs> I played that with the quick change going to the four chord on bar two and then back to the one chord after that and you could play this boogie pattern with the straight eighths feel as well you don't have to play it as a shuffle it would sound more like this and when you're doing the shuffle pattern the boogie pattern you would hit that six interval on the two and the four instead of the two and and four and so it'd be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and with the shuffle it was one and two and three and four and one so that would be a more common way to play it if you're playing like a straight eights rock blues feel but we're going to focus on the shuffle rhythm for now and come back to a rock blues later so for practice just work on getting that boogie pattern down just start with one chord, either an A5 or an E5, and just really work on getting that sixth interval in there and playing that pattern with the shuffle rhythm. And just do it over and over and over again until you have it down. And listen to lots of blues, lots of classic blues. You'll hear it all the time. And so that'll really help get the sound in your head if you don't know it very well. Although if you listen to a lot of Western music, if you've listened to a lot of blues in the past, you've heard this a million times, so I'm sure it's really familiar to you. And then once you have it down with just one chord, then play it to the whole 12 bar blues. And just play it out of time without a metronome or a backing track to start with. You can play it with the quick change or without the quick change. 
probably start without the quick change and then do the quick change once you have it down. Do it as slow as you need to, and then once you feel comfortable doing it, once you can play it without, in, without stopping or without messing up, then play it to the backing track that I gave you in the last lesson, just to that shuffle beat rhythm, and play all the way through the 12 bar blues in the key of eight. So that's how to play the boogie pattern. In the next lesson, I'm gonna teach you what a turnaround is, and I'm gonna teach you how to play a turnaround and an ending when you play a 12 bar blues. So once you have this boogie pattern down and can play to the jam track, go ahead and move on to the next lesson. So thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and keep moving forward.